Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Today we're going to be doing my review for Episode 10. So, yeah, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. So, Episode 10 was the mid-season premiere after Crisis. We haven't had The Flash in like two months or something like that. Obviously, we saw Barry and some of the other characters in the final two episodes of Crisis recently, like a few weeks back. But, you know, it's been a while, and it was kind of nice to get back. I think this episode was good. I didn't think it was, like, amazing or anything. There was some points in the episode where I wasn't so sure about it. But I think overall, I did enjoy it. I thought it was pretty good. Set up some cool stuff as well, especially towards the end, which I'm excited to talk to you about. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get right into it. So, at the start, we start off, we're at CC Jitters. This is obviously post-crisis, so it's all redone and everything. Maybe it got destroyed, I don't know. Or they just like resurfaced it. And it's been a few months because they go real time actually on the show. I do believe right now. So there's this new CC Jitters. Barry comes. He saves the day. blah de blah de blah That's kind of normal. Like nothing too special. And you have Cisco freaking out over, you know, Crisis and how the Earth submerged. And how he got like this Superman t-shirt which I thought was very funny. And I, I really liked it. And also we had a new Flash intro. Just wanted to say, really freaking cool. Really, really cool. I loved it. I'm sure most of you guys really loved it as well. And so we have Nash Wells. He's still here. He's around, obviously, after Crisis, where he was pariah. And also, Cisco at that same point talks about, like, he has this, like, book, like a sort of play card book of all these villains that have returned or are returning or are back. And I guess he's, like, going to go off and sort of follow them. That's what they teased at the end of the episode. I don't know how he knows that all these people are villains and all these people have changed if they've changed like this new Dr. Light in this episode. So I think that's them sort of glancing over the fact that probably that doesn't really make much sense as to why he would have like a book and have all the names of the people who are back because of Crisis and things like that. So expect some of those villains to come very very soon because that is obviously a big tease that they put in there on purpose. Then we have the return of Diggle, so this is obviously post-Arrow, Arrow's ended. So this made me really happy because, you know, post-Arrow, we're going to see some of these characters return. They still exist. Diggle has gone on since the end of Arrow to be in this episode, so what's to say that, you know, whoever else is in the show can't stick around? Obviously, we've got the spin-off Arrow show coming, so that's another way for them to stick around. But yeah, so what happens with Barry and Diggle this episode? Actually, Barry's not in that much this episode, which was kind of strange, but he has some amazing scenes with Diggle, and basically Diggle gives him Oliver's original mask that Barry gave to him first, and Barry sort of believes that this is, like, Oliver's final mission, that this is a sign, but it turns out by the end of the episode, when they run to Lee and Yu, we don't actually get to see Liam and you, but we're in the jail cell where Deathstroke was for a while, that basically he's looked too far into this, he's trying to come up with clues, come up with things to, you know, actually make there be a mission for him, for him to continue what Oliver basically used to do, and he basically learns life is much more than just this mission, it's also about living, and, you know, Oliver sacrificed himself so all of you guys could live on. And so we have a few amazing scenes, especially towards the end when Barry realises that he is sort of looking into this way too much. He sits down with Diggle and they have this little talk and it's very intimate and it's just a really nice scene and a really great moment that I definitely remembered like the most out of anything this episode. Okay, so let's go back, talk about some of the stuff that is also happening with Iris in this episode. Iris is a fairly big character in this episode. It's you know, very focused on this black hole storyline that they're going down. I'm not sure if I'm totally into the idea of black hole, but the way they end the episode was really good, and that has got me very excited to see what's coming next. However, so you got Iris investigating black hole, she meets this person, they talk about Malcolm, who was the guy that got killed by black hole because Iris was investigating him, and so the guy we saw earlier in the season doesn't actually really exist. They explain some stuff. Iris finds out that the organization is called Black Hole, and we have this attacker who is this new Dr. Light, and she looks a bit weird with her glowy eyes and stuff. I wasn't so hot on her because I feel like she was a bit lackluster, and 
there was especially a few scenes where it was supposed to be tense and it was kind of funny. I don't know why, but it just didn't really work because you had this back and forth between Iris working to try and expose this guy at this company, he's like in charge of it, and also he's ordering her to do this. And there was this funny scene where she was about to kill Killer Frost. When she was about to kill Frost, sorry. And she's just holding the gun. She literally waits like 10 seconds. She's just holding it. And it just so happens to be she gets the phone call. You know, then she goes off. She's like, I get hired for this shit. You know, I'm out. But it's funny because obviously that wouldn't happen in reality. She would have just shot her straight away. Because if she was a good assassin, she would have done that. But... Yeah, so a few things like that kind of annoyed me. I just don't think the villain was very compelling. And maybe you disagree, that's fine. Let me know in the comments down below. Do you like this new version of Dr. Light? I just thought she was a bit hollow. I thought it was all about the technology rather than her as a villain. And so, yes. Let's move on. So we've got Diggle and Barry, like I said, doing this stuff with Mirakuru. And that's all great. And then we get a reference to Obsidian Tech from Supergirl, who stole a sample of their tech, apparently, according to the guy in charge of this company. And this is the place that Iris is investigating. So Obsidian Tech is obviously a reference to Supergirl, so that's a new effect of this post-crisis world that, you know, they're on the same Earth and they're referencing each other. So that was cool to see. And we have a few kind of annoying things. I find that the CW shows really, really don't get social media and sort of technology and you know, the way that the internet works. Obviously, we know because we're all over the internet. You know, I do YouTube videos, you guys watch the videos, you know how it works in terms of statistics. So I always get a little bit annoyed when they say, oh, in an hour we got 100,000 views, even though we're not like super popular. It just sort of exploded and it's just not realistic. And, you know, but that happens a lot. And then we move on, we go back to Cisco, we've got this stuff inside his lab, and it's very much so led us to believe that Harry's in fact dead and, you know, he's never coming back. But it was cool to see that, and I think there is a possibility that he could have survived, he could be on like another Earth, he could be on our Earth, but maybe they don't know right now. So also, Iris gets attacked in this episode, she basically nearly dies, she gets attacked a few times. But at one point she gets these fifth degree burns, I think they called it, so really bad burns. And in the end, Joe talks to her and talks to her about like how we have time. You need to sort of chill out and take it slow. Don't go into the firing line by yourself. And this was a big thing this episode because Barry does the same thing. He finds out about Oliver's mask. He jumps the gun. He's like, yes, let's go to Lian Yu. We've got to investigate this. We've got to do it straight away. So I think that was the big theme of the episode. You know, the idea of patience and the idea of time because they've been leading towards this deadline with Crisis that everyone was used to working so fast that now, you know, they need to sit back and relax. And I think that was the big theme of this episode. So yeah, Iris gets into a few fights, Barry's on Lian Yu, but they are united by what they're doing. So yeah, there is a big revelation that this guy is pretty much, you know, one of the higher ups at Black Hole, he's in charge of some of the stuff that they do, so he's basically exposed to us, we know that he's involved. Also a note I wrote down, obviously I referenced this earlier, but I wrote a note saying where is Barry, because like, he wasn't in much of the episode, it very much so seemed like it was like Iris, Camilla, Cecile, and then obviously Joe towards the end. I think it was mainly centered around Iris. And I liked the Iris stuff, but it was mainly the villain stuff with the villain of the week, the new Doctor Light, that I wasn't so keen on. So, I don't know. I felt like I wanted more of Barry and Diggle as well. And so it also seems like Cisco is potentially leaving for a bit. Maybe that means he's gone for a few episodes, but he's not leaving permanently or anything like that. So don't worry. But Nash is going to stick around. And we get a look at this photo that he has, and Allegra's in the photo, so it seems like somehow he's related to Allegra, maybe a different version of her, or it could be her. I'm intrigued to see where they go with that, but obviously at the end you have Barry and Iris with Oliver reminding him that, you know, he has to take his own advice and, you know, be a hero, inspire, and live on, essentially. So you have that nice scene with those two, but then we go to the ending, and this was quite a long ending, and I really liked it. This has got me really intrigued for what's to come next, because this ending scene, you get to see Iris, she's sort of figuring out stuff, like you get to see Mira, 
and then AV3, what does AV3 mean? She flips it, she looks in the mirror, and it says Eva. And so is it her tech? It seems like potentially she was working on something. Whoever this Eva person is, who is related to the guy in charge of Black Hole. So she goes back to the headquarters and she uses the Black Hole pin to get into this headquarter sort of place for Black Hole. And so she's looking around and she looks at this mirror and right at the end, I got scared the shit out of. And it's really hard for The Flash or like any of these shows to scare the shit out of you because it's very predictable but this obviously it was tense you're expecting something to happen but this did scare the shit out of me so I gotta commend them for that where the arm pokes out and pulls Iris into the mirror I have no idea what's happening but it's something in relation to this Eva that was talked about obviously towards the end of the episode and so yeah she's pulled through the mirror what the fuck has happened to Iris we're going to have to find out next week. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. We are 100 subscribers away from 100,000 subscribers. Please be sure to share the video around so people can find the channel and we can reach that goal. So I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.